Welcome to This Commerce Life. We are an unscripted podcast dedicated to small businesses and entrepreneurs in the retail and consumer packaged goods space in Canada and the United States. I'm Phil Chang, co-host and co-founder. And I'm Kenny Benucci, co-host and co-founder of This Commerce Life. Our love is the journey to retail. And our passion is sharing that with you every week. Mm-hmm. Got it. All right, all right, all right. Thanks. Hey, James. James. Kenny B. Phil, how are you? How are you? Ya? We're well, and you? Yeah, I like your East Van sign. <clears throat> no, that was in the Pretty coffee gracious. bar. That was in my coffee bar before we closed it. As soon as we closed it. That come home. You had East Van Coffee Roasters? No, we had Commercial Drive. Uh, we're, we're commercial Drive Coffee Companies made a couple of buddies, and we had the Drive Coffee Bar. Oh, cool. That's fun stuff. How's your guys this uh, Thursday? Ah, doing all right. Yeah, doing it's okay. All right. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. It's a weird time for us. We don't usually record at this time. It's kind of, yeah. Kinda, it's actually kind of nice. Yeah, it's kind of nice. How's my doing sound? Good. I've got earbuds if we want me to go with those. Oh, you're good. You do whatever you want, shape. man. Yeah, no, it sounds good. You do it's you. Up to you. Yeah. All right. Is that, is that a picture from the booth at uh, yeah. CHFA? Nice. Come on. Yeah. That looks good, man. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are pretty a... busy too. You had a busy booth. Yeah. Yeah. People, uh, people, uh, we had some fun, obviously, with the gamification with the basketball hoop and stuff. So. Yeah. 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 Good. Good all that and stuff. I swear, all that even stuff. if you subtract <clears throat> my multiple trips to your. Um, <laughs> To, to get ice cream or to get gelato um it was yeah, still you busy, did well anyway I promise. yeah even, with, even without phil you still did okay i love it so i love it man um so for for listeners mm-hmm. we have i i think i'm gonna get your last name wrong it's james bocher 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 james yeah. bocher that's the one and it is the right time of year well i guess it's really well, not good yet. any time of the year i don't yeah. care what's happening in vancouver but in toronto where i'm at yeah it is like it's just 25 degrees and it's super humid today so oh. if you are thinking about a gelato you probably want this guy's stuff in your hands so you, you <laughs> want you want some righteous gelato in your hands is what you uh, i appreciate want. that thank you um you know so we're, we're super stoked to have you because it's literally it is you know, it's, something it's that we should have all year round, but uh, right now season. it's yeah. tis the right. season. Yeah. Ontario has been a little yeah. different as, as James knows, like we've had, it's interesting out here. I mean, the West coast has been interesting anyway. Mm-hmm. You guys out East have been rocking it, but we sure the hell haven't. Yeah. It hasn't, summer hasn't even really began. No, it's, here. it's today. It's humid as well here. Not raining yeah. brutally, but it's wet. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's just, just been cold. We're, I put the heat back on. 26 feels like 32 with humidity. I put the heat wow. back on. Shut the air off and put the heat on. I was freezing this morning. That's the one. Sure. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't get it. Um, so, so we're excited to have you on. We, we, uh, I've had your, I've got, I've had the dairy free in my, um, the dairy free raspberry in my uh, freezer for, I, I think it's a fixture. So we've had it there a awesome. very long time. Um, the kids love it. And so I was telling them you were coming on and, and they were <laughs> super stoked about it. Um, but we met James at CHFA and uh, told him he, he had to come on and, and we had to do it just before the season started or as the season starting. So we can kind of get this episode out there. Awesome. Um, that is the intro we do. We, we'd love to hear about you and, and like, you know, kind of what in your journey took you to gelato and where you come from and, and all those kind of good things. Sure. Yeah. I'd love to share. It's your um, hour, buddy boy. Yeah. No, 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 no. I love, I love the conversation more than anything. Well, don't um, we, you won't stop us from talking. I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, how righteous came to be is kind of a cool story. I was doing freelance graphic design and, and uh, strategy for small brands back in uh, the mid two thousands uh, and uh, started working with this little gelato shop that could in, in Calgary and uh, it was about time they were going to close up the doors selling gelato in Calgary, Canada, uh, when it's winter most of the time is a tough gig. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I was having a meeting with the guy that had started the shop and he just told me that I, I loved his, his store or company more than he did. 
And uh, we did a bit of a handshake deal for me to take over this uh, this little gelato shop that wasn't doing too much revenue, but people really loved it. So I uh, ended up uh, doing a handshake deal to repay um, the purchase price over three years because I had $1,800 in my pocket. So it was uh, it was a weird one for sure. But um, yeah, uh, not even uh, not even a day before we opened, we we dealt with adversity. Someone then threw in a, a brick through the window and, and lit the store on fire before we opened in 2009. Lovely. And uh, what? Who yeah, lights an ice a gelato uh, store on fire? Like, like what? A gelato place is really the last That's place you expect wrong. like domestic terrorism. Did they think I, you were something else? Or <laughs> seriously, a front? Uh, I got exposed to the gelato mafia pretty quick, I guess. But uh, apparently, yeah, it was it was uh, it was an interesting one. But uh, you know, I'm not for those that that know. Uh, I'm dating myself a bit here, but I'm I'm not about to play Columbo to figure out who did it. I just had mm. to get open. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we uh, we were told six months till we'd open, and and uh, got it done in about eight weeks with uh, friends and family getting their hands dirty and rebuilding the sucker, and uh, opened to a lineup around the around the block, and then uh, five months later, the the landlord said he was going to double our our rent. So um, it was uh, uh, one of those moments where easy to quit. Uh, based on the adversity but wow. I was too young too I was 25 at the time and uh, yeah. and just said we'll keep going so uh, you know kept the brand alive serving uh, cafes and and doing events and all that kind of stuff and then uh, when the floods happened in Calgary in 13 14 we said how can we rise up and we are fundamental in bringing food truck culture to Calgary so we got our truck out there serving coffee and soup and gelato to all the frontline responders during the Alberta floods and then uh said can we create a product that could raise some money for the calgary zoo it happened to be at the time so we did a, a collab called two by two rebuild the zoo and a dollar from each jar went to to serve them and and uh went into 12 local co-ops and uh after that it was kind of the rest is history so awesome love love the product love the brand and and co-op said what's next and i had this clear jar sitting on my desk uh it's kind of still can see it but yeah. uh just said, what if we put some in it and named it something and off to the races. And now, uh, and now you can find us in most corners of Canada and we're just getting going in the U S and trying to, uh, share our, our purpose and, and mission with others. And, you know, our, uh, our ethos is, uh, you know, create things that make the world a little more awesome and, and, uh, enrich people's lives. And so have a lot of fun every day, creating things that, that do those things both on the employer side as well as uh the, the con consumer side or the customer fan as we call them side so very cool you're still so you're still in calgary doing yeah <clears throat> yeah we manufacture everything in calgary here okay. uh, started you didn't in, get the uh, message they tried to run you out of town and then yeah. they tried to well, price you out of like, town yeah you're kind of <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we had, we, had, we had the shop, the shop closed, and then I called her a few friends, and uh, a friend of mine had a, Eric Day, he had a little catering company, and he said, I have no space for you except in this garage, and there's literally a storage uh, bay for, like, chafing dishes for catering, but it had an electrical panel and some water for, uh, like, a mop sink, essentially, and so I said, we can get going here, and you know, made our, our first few samples for a couple local restaurants and uh, before we got in trouble from health services. But uh, yeah. after that, I banged on a few doors and I found this old egg facility that was a commissary kitchen for a bunch of little brands. And uh, this lady, Sue, opened the door and said, what do you want? I said, I need some space. So for the next six months, we made gelato in an unair conditioned egg factory that was uh, our reclaimed egg factory, where it was like literally the gelato would come out of the machine and it was like 40 degrees inside the building. And so like, soup. Oh, no. yeah, you'd be running this to yeah. the as fast as you could. <laughs> and I knew that wasn't going to last forever. Uh, and uh, we had had saved up a little bit of money, but uh, a guy that I knew his brother had a bay that used to belong to a guy that had hot dog carts. And, uh, and he said, my, my brother, the hot dog guy is, has, uh, you know, left, left overnight, but there's a, a six by six freezer in here. Are you interested? And I was like anything with a freezer I'm interested in. So we took over this bay and, uh, I've seen this girl at the time, her, her cousin, Steven was, uh, was doing, uh, um, contract work. And so I said, can you help me build this out? And, when I told him how much money uh, I had, he said, no. And then I said, well, what if I help you do it? And uh, he's a kind man. 
And so Stephen uh, took on the job and we spent a lot of nights building that sucker together. And so I'm very grateful for him coming into it. And, and uh, we were there until we were, it was a 2,500 square foot building and we were there for about two and a half years before we were standing on top of each other. Uh, our, our office used to be an 11 foot Ikea dining table and we called it our, <laughs> our head, uh, headquarters. And uh, everybody just sat around it with their laptops. I remember meeting with Nordstrom there and they're like, senior executive food service guy michael northern is like this is your office i was like yeah just sit down <laughs> buddy it's ice cream we're making gelato here we don't worry exactly about the exactly so uh yeah those those were some fun days and and wow. then got to the point where again bursting at the seams there and uh was driving home one day and drove past the facility that we're in today and it was just an empty uh building and the landlord was uh believed in what we were doing he's He's uh, a great man and, and uh, even let us have access to it before we got in here because we needed uh, somewhere to store some of our packaging because it was just happening all too fast for us. So that was back in 2014, 15, which was, um, those were some fun years for sure. So you've got, you've got enough, um, you can do capacity in the space you're in, obviously, like you're, you're yeah. okay for yeah you if you if you're here there's there's a video on youtube called righteous gelato uh who we are and you can see the video and so when we designed this space it was really about um creating the like the non-factory so there's glass to the production area a lot of natural light coming in nice it's very unlike most most production facilities um you know we're we're a stone's throw from downtown so it's very accessible for everybody and and we can see the the skyline from our our door <clears throat> of downtown and uh yeah it's just like willy wonka meets google we've said before it's like uh it's got a vibe That's to cool. it and, and people come in and, and just love it and and most you know you can't put a job posting up for a gelato maker because that's not an occupation in canada you could could maybe some other parts of the world but uh we get a lot of folks that just want to be why not i i uh, think that's well, now there's awesome. a lot of people that maybe have it on their resume. Yeah. But when we were getting going, it was no, there being yeah. very few, zero. Exactly. Well, plus, you know, not for anything, not not to not Calgary, but Calgary's not. It's a little it's different than Toronto country. or Vancouver yeah. or, or yeah. even Montreal. Sorry, it's Calgary, not straight, but not a no. straight path from uh, no uh -huh. to uh, gelato making. But, no, uh, no, you we're changing a whole bunch that of thing. There's a lot of tech going on in Calgary. I'm proud to yeah. be Calgary and born and raised and. That's and some awesome. cool food food companies coming mm. up, and uh, a pretty decent hockey team. Although we're in a bit of a sticky a spot, a bit of a pinch, tonight, but, but that's okay. <laughs> you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, but you're you're a hell of a lot farther than either of our teams. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't take much yeah. in our city, so we'll let go. that yeah. one go. Yeah. There we go. Wow, yeah. wow, <laughs> that's. I'm not even sure where to say. Like that's a crazy ride. <laughs> What's this yeah, all over the place? I love the fact you actually you were scraping nickels all the way through too. Like oh, you really, uh, you really knocked on a lot of friends and uh, uh, yeah. contacts doors, right? Or sounds like it anyway. Like it was. When we it started, must have been interesting. Oh, it's it's been nothing short of interesting. When we started uh, with our first <clears> restaurant <throat> in Calgary, is a little pizzeria called Famoso, and uh, they loved the gelato here for their their. It was their sixth right. location. They had five in Edmonton, and they said, "Can you deliver to Edmonton?" And I. I'm kind of one of those guys that's like, we'll figure it out. But I didn't have a delivery vehicle. I'd literally put it in my Mazda 3 and drive it to the restaurant and uh, pretty fast. So it didn't melt. And then they said, uh, they said, can you do Edmonton? And I was like, Fuck, how am I going to do this? And uh, <laughs> it's on the Mazda 3. I drive fast, but it's not that fast. Yeah. It's like, it's oh, crap. So, so true story. The power went out one day and I was freaking out the next morning when I came in, the power's out in the building. But everything was in this chest freezer and I opened the chest freezer and everything was still frozen. Yeah. And I was like, there it is. And so uh, I I get the orders on Friday, uh, make the gelato on Saturday, have my kid brother come in on Sunday and help me box it up. And then we put it in this chest freezer. I go to Enterprise on McLeod Trail and rent a van on on uh, Monday morning. So you're still doing the delivery. <laughs> push, push the chest freezer into the back and drive three hours north uh, to these restaurants. Well, you're what the awesome. hell are you doing? What, what are you That's doing? That's amazing. Yeah. Oh my God. So uh, so yeah, we uh, we did that for almost two and a half years to- Holy to shit. Happen. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a lot of just um, 
don't take no for an answer, you know, figure it out as you go. And, and there's, we have a, a bit of a cardinal rule here, which is find a way to yes. And, uh, and really that's, that's really all it, it was. But about. that's not close. I mean, you know, people maybe don't know, but Calgary and, and Edmonton are close on the map, but they're not that close really. Uh, and that not really that close on the road. map either. And it's an interesting road in the winter, <laughs> really right? Not. I mean, that's not a, yeah, that's yeah, not yeah. a, yeah. You know, that, that runs a bit of a, that's a bit of a run. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I think oh, I got Christ. to know uh, I got to know the RCMP guys outside of uh, outside of town a little bit because it's driving pretty fast. But oh my god! But, uh, yeah, those were those were my uh, late twenties, uh, early thirties, getting this thing uh, getting this thing going. Holy shit! Good for you. That's a that's a lot of that's so, that's a lot of commitment. So yeah. did you did you when you if I un if I if I rewind the whirlwind for just a second, yeah. like when you shook on this thing, yeah, did you think you were getting a gelato shop or did you kind of have, you know, cause sometimes were you, you kind of know this or was the shop going to yeah. be the goal? Cause I'm wondering too, cause I was going to ask like, did you go yeah. back to a shop that like, you don't have any oh, retail I... anymore? Right. Like the lineup around the block isn't happening. Yeah. Yeah. That happened for about five months. That was, that was right. And then I, then the... I think, I think when I took it over and sort of part of the precursor is I had a clothing line before this and there's a long story about um, my business partner leaving me high and dry and in that and it was a bit of a, I, I've spent a lot of my life in my childhood just sort of, you know, riding the wave and, and seeing what happens and, mm -hmm. and so when I when this opportunity came up to take over this gelato shop I, I had nothing else going and I said well, why not let's see what happens yeah. and, and I think probably back then all i was thinking was i'm gonna have this cool shop people are gonna come by we'll be a part of the community we'll do right. we'll do that you know and then you get sort of hit with some adversity and you gotta you gotta think differently like a lot of us have had people have sort of been exposed to this at at, at scale and in, in the last couple of years is thinking differently about how how their businesses work yeah. and that happened to us multiple times over the years so so the last few here with the pandemic has been a bit of uh, we were ready for it. I would say in a weird way, like we we had been through a lot of stuff, but uh, but I think there was there was sort of a, a moment. I had finished Howard Schultz's Onward book about Starbucks, and he talks about scale really being uh, a part of uh, the ability to 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 live out your mission at 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 a greater scale, right? Yeah. So when you think about all the great things that Starbucks has done for the coffee community or employment standards in the U S especially, and so on and so forth, that I think became the motivator for growth was, you know, if we continue to grow, we can employ more people and they can have a great place to come to work and, and our products will be available to more people and consumers deserve the best. And so there's all these sort of pieces of it that come along that give you the energy to continue to pursue it. And, you know, very rarely, if ever, is it about um, revenue? I mean, you have to have financial sustainability for a company to for sure. tomorrow. But really, it's been about just like we only get one life. Let's have a blast doing something, and uh, and this has been been that. Even even through the hard stuff, uh, I think uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. And then yeah. what, was it always called Righteous Gelato or did you change the name? No, it used to have, uh, used to be called the F word. We kind of joke about it, but uh, yeah, there was, there was sort of two things that, that happened. And, you know, we were in a spot where a company had emerged out of the U.S. called Gelato Fiasco. And so there was some tension with trademarks. And mm. at the time when they existed and we existed, both were pretty small and no one really thought too much of it. And then we got to a point where we were sort of colliding at the border and, and um, you know, we, we realized that we were in a, a bit of a spot where not realizing our opportunity within other markets, especially the US, would be a disservice not only to to the people that work here, but you know, the consumers out there and obviously stakeholders in, in the business. Um, and so we sat around, we spent about 18 months and just kept coming back to this idea of um, I had a dog that lived for 18 years. His name was Shaka. And uh, so hang loose in Hawaiian, right? And yeah. Uh, and so that was sort of the, the, the center of the conversation. A lot of times Shaka Gelato was put, pushed around a lot. Okay. And, uh, and then we just kind of like, we would always get frustrated when people would be like, oh, it's a fiasco or something would go wrong. And like, no wonder your name's fiasco, like whether it's the fire or whatever the hell's going on. And, uh, 
And so I was like, what if you had a name that really like sort of was that aspiration of where you're going and what you're doing and who you are. And so that's really where righteous came to be in and not, not obviously not uh, in a religious sense, uh, but more so in like the, the surf culture, the surf culture, yeah. Yeah, skateboard really. culture, all that shit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's just cool, man. Like seriously, you, gotta, you, you guys have done cool. Like your whole story is really cool. <laughs> Thank you. Like it's just uh, it's different. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think righteous for me, it's like you, you know, it, everybody talks about finding Nemo and that was actually a moment where it sort of clicked, but it was like, you know, righteous is this expression of, you knew it was going to be good, but then it's better than expected. Right. And it's mm-hmm. like, right. Righteous, you know, I was like righteous. And so, um, so yeah, we're trying to embody that and, and, you know, whether it's our B Corp certification or our, we just got an award for most admired corporate cultures in Canada. It's like all of these things are, are really, you know, a testament to, to doing it the right way, or maybe a, a different way than, than most businesses. And I think right now it's just such a crazy world. And, and there's two things we know are, are, um, essential right now for everybody. And we get to sort of these, these, um, needs, which is, uh, happiness and joy and, and, you know, just this, this good vibes that's got to happen. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, and then, yeah, everybody's just deserving of delicious things. And so we're, we're trying to do both of those things uh, all day long. So your, your team of weirdos is inspiring. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have a, we have a come as you are policy, which is really just about, I mean, I was a punk yeah. rock kid growing up and, and uh, I know that everyone has a story and, and as soon as this judgment clicks in, it means you don't have enough information. And I think, yeah. We really, you know, make this a, uh, 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 one of our core virtues is, is uh, everyone is welcome. So just, just really embodying that in a, in a We need more way. of that. Yeah. We need a lot more of for, that. For the listener, yeah. I just want to clarify, yeah. I wasn't being, I, I, <laughs> I wasn't putting down James's team. They actually <laughs> call themselves a team of weirdos. So I, I, I wasn't I just assumed you're on the webpage and full disrespectful or anything. <laughs> I yes. just I want to be clear before somebody goes, what the F, man? Well, you can't say that. I'm like, I, I didn't. Ah, it's, relax, it's on the website. <laughs> I wasn't gone. These people are very late. I just back. want to be it's really clear. They look super stoked to be working where they're working, which is amazing. Yeah, well, and I can't, I can't take credit for it. I mean, Steve Jobs was the first to really say, you know, you got to be, you got to be weird to do really amazing things in the world. And I, I honestly think, uh, for all the y- young people out there, if you get called weird anytime, that is that is just a just take it and run. That is a compliment, right? Yeah, being on the yeah. fringe ain't that bad, right? It's oh, all it's great. It's it's kind of cool too. Well, good for yeah. you. Wow. Yeah. So, how so, many people are you at right now? Like, yeah. what, what is the size yeah, of this, this we, enterprise? We, we float around uh, forty right now. Uh, That's a good size. Members. And uh, yeah, when we during COVID, obviously there wasn't a lot of part time work and events and brand ambassadors and street team and all right. that kind of stuff. Those are kind of the 65, 70 days um, in terms of team members. And uh, yeah, we've got a, a really great group right now. I'm really proud. We've made some amazing <clears throat> new uh, hires and, and some wonderful people that are gravitating towards the brand. And we've got a lot of um, employment perks, I guess they're called, but we, we just call them sort of who we are. And, and, these things I think really change the narrative around business. And uh, it's fun because I do this thing called founder coffee with every new team member at 30, their 30 days and uh, mm. just sit and let them ask questions and, and uh, let them know that I'm, I'm not a guy wearing a bad suit every day. I wear sneakers and a t-shirt most days and I'm, we're all the same. So just let's have, have a good time together. And, and they're always like, you know, I, I'm just waiting for, for the shoe to drop or like whatever about culture and i was like you can ask anybody here like when people are like what's your culture like i was like just call just phone like phone the office and ask because yeah. because you're gonna it's it, it is what it is culture is not something you create it's the dna of an organization it's what happens when no one's looking kind of were you always like this did you always have this idea or this way of going through life or I think I, I, I think there's two things. If I look at myself, uh, when I was younger, I used to stick up for a lot of kids that got picked on and then get beat up myself. So that's one where I just, I think everyone deserves to be cared for and, and belong. Um, and then just sort of a natural, uh, tendency to lead. And I think, um, I grew up in low income housing with in a single parent household and I, uh, learned early on sort of to take things into my own control. And, and I think that my leadership, 
is 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 very much that way that you know we can if we can dream it we can do it and um and i think that's why not going to school and getting an mba and trying to understand that way of running a company and just like running i say often like you know build the company you want your mom or dad to work for because i can tell you a lot of kids get to hear the the bad sad angry mad stories of their parents coming home about the work that they go to every day yeah. and who, who wants that and i think that's where we're coming around you know culture's been a big thing and i think the world is better for that there's obviously still some some not great workplaces but i think uh at the same time it's it's getting a lot better especially in the last decade and it's rewarding when you've got you know new new leaders emerging in in big organizations leading the way or you've got companies like danone becoming a b corp or things like that yeah, that's I, crazy i think really push yeah. towards a really good quality of of work and and i just think there's a new there's a new human element to work and um i'm excited for future generations to to get to see it see it through so i, I think phil and i get <clears throat> excited because we're older than you i'm older than both of you <laughs> but you know i come from you know a, a whole different time like so how old do you know uh, james 39 39 so i'm 56 so that 17 years is enough yeah like when when we were you know at the age of probably a lot of your people mm -hmm. it was you know work and joy weren't necessarily attached if you found it that was awesome oh, no. but yeah. it yeah. wasn't definitely not that at all. Um, yeah. your parents coming home not happy about having to spend a day at work was probably pretty common i mean it wasn't you know like life was miserable but it definitely yeah. wasn't what uh, your generation and the ones behind you are doing where they they just don't tolerate a lot of stuff they want their time they yeah. want to work in a place that they feel a part of and respected. And, you know, we were laughing there. Like we never asked for holidays. Mm -hmm. Like you just, if you didn't get them, you just, oh, I guess we're not getting any. Mm -hmm. You never asked for a raise. Cause you just, well, I guess we're not getting that. Like, you know what I mean? Like we're, we're the whole, this new generation is a lot different. You expect, and you, you expect you a lot more. And you the don't chance to ask questions, less. right? You like you, you just kind no of like figured it out or you're like, an no idiot day and, and it was, yeah, yeah. There's no yeah. founder day coffee. No, there wasn't even a boss you were not, coffee. Like, <laughs> sure, you were lucky to have just a coffee. Yeah, and you were yeah, lucky yeah. to have a coffee break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm not even. Well, I'm, not, I'm not going back 50 yeah. years. I mean, that's only like yeah. 30 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's inspiring to see what it's you're doing. It's super like, inspiring. It's just, and, I love and, this. and we met, we met a lot of um, your foe. I guess I met more than Kenny did because I well, had a lot I of gelato when I was there. The but <laughs> No ice cream came my way. <laughs> well, I tried. Like, so no, I told him about it and then I try and bring him one, but I no, just eat it before I got back. Uh, right? yeah, that's so, the point. That's not trying. That's, that's, um, bare, that's, that's no, a half No, I, I, I tried you in my heart, but you know. Oh, yeah, whatever. Like righteous gelato belongs in my stomach. Yeah, like this try shit. Come on, seriously. Anyway, what I was steps. saying was we met a lot of your guys and I know it was at a trade show, but they were, they were stoked to be there. They were stoked to be representing the brand. Like, you know, Kenny, and I, I've been to a lot of trade shows. We met a lot of people. So you can kind of tell when people are sort of excited. Which is why uh, this, you know this I mean? industry like, is but, kind of fun. Cause this yeah, industry that yeah. as a general rule, most people actually really like being in the Pretty natural excited. side or, or yeah. this type of, like they like yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for the yeah. most part, I, I think uh, a lot of people enjoy the enjoy the industry for sure. I think there's there's different versions of it. That's for, for sure. sure. Mm -hmm. I think there's um, there's some great products. There's some not so great products. I think, like anything, it's hard to believe in something and be a part of something if you don't really, you know, you're not a you're not a part of it or you don't feel like you're a part of it. And so, what you probably experienced there, Phil, is, yeah, just just what it is and and at the end of the day you know we we get the chance to work along each alongside each other and do things we enjoy and get uh there's a, a deep mutual respect and a, a lot of deep connections in the organization um people make lifelong friends in our organization at, at a rapid rate and uh and i i feel fortunate this is why my job title is sort of morphed into this custodian of culture because the culture, the bedrock is already there and, and it's in this maturing stage. And, you know, it's not on me to um, do anything except let, allow it to do its natural thing. And once in a while, if somebody spills it or, or makes a mess of it, I bring in the mop bucket and clean it up as a custodian would. But uh, but really, it's everyone else just living it out and, and um, yeah, putting their fingerprints on it, too. So 
you are as interesting as your like, seriously. story. <laughs> well, exactly. It's I, so yeah, so fantastic. That's a great way to. It's, yeah, it's just such a nice way to look at things. Yeah. Yeah, like seriously, yeah, it's yeah. nice talking to people like you. I, I like it's it's interesting, right? Where does where does the business like where do you, where do you see this thing going for you? I I know you kind of like you you've got a sky's the limit kind of mentality. Um, where where do you see this thing going? Where where do you want it to go in the next like say five years? Yeah, that's probably a good sort of uh, horizon we'll call it uh, or yeah. our star in terms of five years. Yeah. Well. Um, Canada, we still got lots of work to do. We, we kind of joke that we're like the greatest company no one knows about. So millions of Canadians enjoy our product every year and very few know it's us until we show them the jar. So we'll be like, yeah, righteous. They're like, Oh, that sounds cool. Like, what's it about? And I was like, I guarantee you have this in your freezer. They're like, what do you mean? And I show I, I won't it. lie. I walked by your booth and I didn't know. Yeah. And then when I saw the jar, I was like, Holy shit, raspberry lime is in my freezer. I know it. Right. Like, yeah peanut butter and jam yeah you know so so it's been a weird one because every other company in the world puts this giant logo on things and then like flavor as subtext and i think for me it was a bit of that you know like uh punk rockism for me it's like i'm gonna keep the logo small and put what people are buying big on it and see if it goes and Mm. um yeah sometimes sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but i think more times than not it does bud more yeah, it's an oppor- it's an opportunity and and sure. so we've we've got lots to do in Canada and and we're also really excited about the US. There's so many amazing retailers down there like Sprouts and obviously Whole Foods and For sure. and uh HEB and Wegmans and so we want to partner with them and be involved in their community activities and and I think, you know, 5 years from now I'd be I'd be really happy if you know we had had cemented our our sort of not legacy, but, but footprint on, you know, doing things differently in a space that is getting more and more crowded, which is the grocery store. And, and our, our vision has always been to be the most beloved and inspiring brand in the grocery aisle. So that's really it is, is just continue to stay true to who we are, make delicious things. Don't compromise, uh, be a world-class employer and, uh, and have a sh- shit ton of fun doing it. Like Why that's, not? That's is the that big all? thing. Yeah, is that all you want to do? That's, that's, it. It. that's it. Well, you set the bar low. I mean, it's easier yeah, to hit. Right? Things, so. You know. <laughs> so yeah, that's 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 it. We uh, we're we're excitedly optimistic about the U.S. and and uh, I think there's a lot of smart people uh, that are waiting for someone like us to come along and and share in some joy. So, how long have you been in the states? Or trying to get uh, into the States. We, well, because of the trademark stuff we learned, we like literally the day we launched was two weeks before COVID. And so we, mm-hmm. we put it in 24 stores and Whole Foods in the Pacific mm-hmm. Northwest. And we didn't do too much during COVID. My <clears throat> two priorities in, in my role as, as uh, you know, the, the shepherd of the company was to keep my, my team uh, healthy and safe. And, and um, mental health became a big thing. And so we spent a lot of time just, just nurturing and, didn't get too distracted or too eager about certain things. And so, uh, so we just kind of let it do its thing and now we're back at it. So, uh, you know, it depends how you look at it, but, um, I would say, you know, we're just getting going right now. Our products are going onto a shelf of a retailer literally this week called new seasons market. They're a yeah. big certified retailer yeah. I'm a big fan of them. And, and so, um, so if you're, you're out there listening and you're near new seasons, Please go say hello and check. On, I call it checking on the kids, but when you face up the product in the store, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. and then yeah, we'll just keep keep chipping away. And and I shared with my team, you know, as much as we want to um, get growing down there. Uh, at the same time, I want to you know shake some hands and meet some people and and really be true to who we are. It's not about pitching a product to a buyer. It's about you know getting to know what's important to them and what they care about and. And continue to take care of our, our relationships in Canada. We've got some wonderful folks like Charles at Metro who looks after us or Richard at Whole Foods up here and right. Nathan at Community and so many amazing people that just really are um, are the reason we get to do what we love every day because they uh, give us permission, which I think is a big thing we ignore in life sometimes that uh, without people believing in you, you don't get very far. So Exactly. Wow. I have a, I have a, Untraditional question, but this sure. is an untraditional interview. I, I think <laughs> um, 
we, we kind of come into these things without a, a ton of expectations. We, we love the brands that we talk to and uh, we're just so blessed to be able to talk. But every now and then you get someone like you that pops on so many different levels. I, I think the, the thing that I'm so amazed about that I wondered if you had any wisdom for other founders is culture is a, that's a really difficult one. Um, quite frankly, right? As we, we know a lot of founders that really struggle with, you know, the words that you need to use and then the actions that you need to do it. And then sometimes the the dough that you need to throw behind it to make all, you know, kind of the magic work. Where, where do you, is there kind of like inspiration that you draw that you would, you would give other founders as, you know, things that allow them to, you know, kind of shape and frame you know, how to be, because honestly, like the, the way you've gone about this is incredible and it's refreshing and it's, it makes me want to be a gelato maker. Which is sort of um, what I was about before. It's like, yeah. like, like, how do you, how do you, <clears throat> I know what you're saying. Like you, you came from a, from a, a, a little tougher upbringing for lack of a better, mm -hmm. right? Probably taught you a lot of good things. Street smart, mm -hmm. sound like you're a pretty good kid helping others. But to Phil's point, culture is, is an overused word and an underplayed mm -hmm underplayed event they, mm. people just don't get it they they think they have culture but everybody everything has culture but it, just because you use the word doesn't mean it's a good culture it just means i doesn't mean much of anything if you don't really kind of get it so did yeah. you read because you said you didn't do the yeah. mba and all that stuff so were you like yeah. an avid reader or you were someone that you're out there that says holy totally. shit i'm just going to be like this person whoever mm. that person is yeah, I uh, there there's a few, but I might get emotional sharing this just because it's sort of uh, timely. But I think um, I'll answer this in two parts really quickly. I think that uh, just quickly to to add on to culture is culture isn't necessarily good. Culture is what it is, and I and Ron had a culture of a lot of places have culture exactly. So, so whatever whatever the culture is, that's that's literally the culture. Culture is is not what you do; it's who you are. It's like literally just just who you are. It's not about uh, ping pong tables or community investment or whatever yeah, free you want to lunch. say. It's, it's literally who you are. Right. Um, and so that's a big, a big thing. And it can have those things. Like it can have a ping pong table, yeah. and, but it's, yeah. it, it's about right. how, how it, how things look when, when no one's looking is what I would always say. Right. Um, my advice quickly to founders is uh you really have to have to have a, a really strong sense of self as a founder to understand what it is that you want to create as a culture. So uh, for instance, I have a friend that's uh, a mother and, and um, her children have dealt with some health things. So within her culture, it's very um, caring for mothers and very caring for uh, people with, with um, you know, different sort of health restrictions and so on and so forth. So that's that would be my first thought it is like what's your awareness about who you are and how you care for others and what's important to you your values ironically my my uh mission in life is the same as the company which is to enrich people's lives and so it's always this extension of the founder um i think that if i was a founder that didn't have the same upbringing and maybe it was easier and i wasn't really sure about things it might have been tougher to be definitive or or like really sort of uh, clear about things. And I know that's where a lot of founders probably are today. Um, and then I would just, I would just ask yourself if you were a founder, what it is that you, you want to achieve with it. And so is it, is it really about, um, creating a workplace that people want to come every day, uh, where they don't have to be sort of tr tricked by foosball tables, but more so like it's, it's a general feeling. Like I just, I do a monthly one-on-one -on -one and someone that's been here for almost five years said, uh, I asked these questions like, what's the first thing you change if you're a CEO or, uh, you know, what can the company do to make your personal life better? And like, so these like things, and she's like, I love it here. It's like nothing. I love it here. And you're just like, it's like, it just picture this kid, you know, like, I love it here. It's not great. Disneyland, you know? Um, so those are always like nice reminders. Uh, yeah. that we're doing the right things. So I think, I think there's there's a few things there, and then the last piece on um, on curiosity. So I I think it's difficult to be uh, a creative thinker in life if you're not curious, and so that's probably one thing uh, I would I would uh, audit if I was a founder is what am I really curious about? And if you're curious about finance or 
uh, the law or whatever, you're going to fall into that place. Like Steve Jobs was, Steve Jobs was very curious about technology changing the world, right? Mm. He wasn't curious about culture, right? He wasn't mm -hmm. curious about yeah. employment yeah. Uh, standards, we'll say. So that's just where he was curious. And other people probably came in and corrected some of the other things, he, his, his weaknesses, maybe your opportunities. But for me personally, again, growing up with not a lot, seeing my dad go through these work placement programs, um, generally growing up in an environment where my grandparents had these like old school values that I was taught pretty early on. All of those things really, I think, turned me into somebody that just genuinely cares for people. And then I started to look, and this is sort of the long boomerang of the story, is uh, for other founders that made it seem, made the impossible seem possible. And there's a gentleman named Tony Shea uh, who passed away tragically in 2020, but um, he, uh, he owns a, a giant company or owned a giant company called Zappos. And uh, he's this uh, quirky little Asian dude. And um, he showed me very early on in my career, 2011, he wrote a book called Delivering Happiness. And uh, I read that and I, I was, I was the same as people coming in the doors here. I was like, this can't be real. And uh, so I went to Vegas, Henderson at the time, and visited Zappos and saw 2000 Zapponians working in a crazy quirky office with streamers hanging from the roof and shake weights when visitors came by and having the best time and to come as you are. And, and they were running this billion dollar company. And I, I literally was like, if you can do it at scale, I sure as hell can do it when I have four employees. <laughs> so at the time it was like, wow, this is, this just makes it real, you know? And, uh, and then I spent a lot of time reading books like uh, Work Rules by Laszlo Bach. He was uh, one of the early dudes at, at Google. Uh, uh, Patty McCord and, and Reed wrote a, a, a few amazing books about Netflix culture and sort of high performance, but in a very caring sort of setting. Uh, so No Rules Rules is one of my favorite books. Um, and just constant uh, learning. So when you see the shift in leadership at a company like Microsoft, or you see how Tim Cook has, has uh, changed things um, for the better in different ways right. uh, since Steve has you know, passed. And, and so there's these giants, Goliaths that you can look to and you can learn a lot. And then I'll share, you know, in the last two years, learning a lot about um, uh, a lesson we learned pretty, pretty uh, rawly and really was you know, we can say we serve communities, but have we served all communities? So, you know, serving communities is not a one size fits all. So we spend a ton of time learning a lot from great leaders on, on DEI and Jedi strategies that allow us to, um, to unlock a new uh, level of culture for us where we used to believe that we did a great job serving communities. And now we're very specific in ensuring that we serve many communities. And, uh, and so I, I think there's no greater gift in life than curiosity because you, there's, there's no shortage of things to learn. And, and when you're passionate about something, that's where it really gets to, to this, these table stakes or this level. Um, so yeah, I read, I read a lot. I learn a lot. I'm always asking questions and, um, and uh, the greatest rule I think for me personally has been never forget where you came from. And so I think that's like, makes it real easy for me to do the right thing. So mm -hmm. I'd almost go back and work full time for someone like you. Almost. Mm -hmm. You're about as close as going to get to get me back full time. Uh, we're pretty damn happy doing <laughs> like, what we're doing. Because right? I, I do. I, I, but, love, yeah. I love, I love, I love the way you, I, I, yeah. you're very, yeah. you're, you're, you feel like a really nice guy, man. Seriously. I would Thanks. love, I would have, I would have been, I would have been a treat to have <laughs> a boss like you. I'm serious. I appreciate been awesome. that. Thank you. Yeah. You could awesome. do a, with a boss like him eating gelato. Yes. That's even like more better. Like what, what better do you get? <laughs> like, uh, like you get good and then you get like amazing. ultra good. Oh my God. Oh, uh, so good. So and they probably get to eat ice cream all day if they want. Yeah. Yeah. Humility, humility and leadership, I think is a really important uh, trait. And um, that's, uh, that's one thing that I think I have uh, going for me is I never, I never pretend I'm any different than the entire team. And, and uh, we have lots of great conversations and connections because of that. And um, yeah, it's, uh, 
it changes things. In a, Pretty cool, in a man. You should path. go on tour. You could help a lot yeah. of people. Yeah. There's a lot of founders, yeah. especially when they're young, that could probably just, it's those yeah. couple years where you, it, it, the, the path they choose there um, sort of dictates how they, how they sort of end up. And some don't end up as they might do well financially and their business might do well, but they're probably not the nicest people on the planet. We, we, and we, all they would have into a lot of push. CEOs. I see that. Yeah. A lot of CEOs that really struggle. Right. You know, what comes out of the mouth is, you, you know, you've, they've read certain books and like you know, culture is right? everything. The people are everything. But then, you know, when it comes down to push comes to shove brass yeah. tax and, and you're shipping, you know, like there aren't many, that you know would kind of like roll up their suits and go down there and, and pack right. the boxes that need to get packed, right? And you kind of go, oh. yeah. You know, I think yeah, uh, yeah. I think it's it's really um, uh, it's an opportunity. I I I think I've always believed that that the world's inherently good and for people sure don't mean mean to do wrong. They're conditioned to do wrong, and so when you see all this turmoil in the world that is is tragic it's like the, those are learned behaviors and so i think that's where um if we can change you know one one person's perception of how companies should work from the inside out then then we've done done a good job so good yeah. for you james yeah. thank you so much for coming this has been amazing that's good i really I, yeah thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed um, this one thoroughly. awesome thank if, you uh Okay, so so mo most importantly, if you want to get some gelato, it's probably in your local grocery store. Uh, if not, you can go to let me see if I've got righteousgelato.com. Right. There you go, righteousgelato.com. Um, what's your favorite flavor? Raspberry lime. <laughs> Are you my first my first flavor creation okay. back in the day and. Uh, yeah, it's always been always been one of my faves. One that's in, one one that's yeah. in the graveyard was blueberry basil, which was one of my faves. Um, but we just launched cookies and cream and coffee, yep. coffee, coffee, really coffee, good. Both are gluten free. I love all of coffee, our coffee, coffee, coffee. That coffee, one's really maybe good. Maybe I'm gonna maybe I'm gonna head out to head to Whole Foods before Daniel gets on a plane. Yeah, um, yeah I, I did try and bring you coffee, 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 but. <laughs> Sorry, Kenny. <laughs> you didn't try hard at all. Like I, see, I see, didn't. see, this is James. See, this is what I get to work with. See, this is culture. See what happens? Lots of chitter okay. chatter, but did he follow Listen, through? Never got uh, an ice cream down my way. I had to walk over and find you, thank God. But jeez. Uh, oh, man. Um, thank you so much. And then two uh, things else we want for you. Yeah. want to know how yeah. to get a, if someone wants to get a hold yeah. of you, Sorry, how yeah. do they do that? Yeah. Or what you, would you recommend? Best yeah, way easiest you. way is just shoot me a note on LinkedIn. I, I try to drop in like once a week and, and see see who, cool. who's saying hello. Um, so you can just look up my name, James Bocher, look up branches yeah. and probably pop up. And then yeah, uh registerlotto.com to find out anything you want. And then we're most mostly on on Instagram more than any other platforms. And we got a lot of fun stuff happening this summer. So keep your eyes peeled and yeah, appreciate the support for anyone that yeah. uh, is already a fan and supports the mission. And uh, I look forward to meeting uh, some people in real life. So that would be cool. Can one more thing? Right. Is it possible yeah. that you rifle off maybe in an email to Phil so we can put it on the notes? Maybe those three or four books. Yeah, I have them. You got I got them. them. I got them all. I wasn't too sure here. Right, I, I was I writing. Tell. I was writing shit I was down. I, I got them. I saw I, you doing. You know, I've read. Was it too sure I read a doing? couple of them, but the, I I got a whole I bunch of them. So I I, I got them. I got just them. Just make sure they're there. Yeah, I think yeah. That's, be we'll nice put them in the uh, podcast notes if anybody's yeah. interested. Probably becomes essential reading for founders. And then maybe maybe Phil adds story driven by Bernadette Jaiwa. Okay, that's got it. That's a good one. Yeah. James, real treat. Cool All right, trip. you guys. Thank you. Have an awesome rest of your day. Thank you. You and, as well. Uh, appreciate your time. Appreciate All right. you. Appreciate Thank your you time too, man. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Right. Take Bye. care. Bye. Phil, stick around. Yeah. Wow, he's okay. cool. I, I would. I he's... would look for a guy like that in a heartbeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> in a heartbeat. Yeah. I mean, yeah. seriously, if, if if we had, if we had bosses, um, founders, leaders like that when when we were in our mid twenties. Yeah. Wow. I think, wow. I think, um, really that's cool. the sort of thing like, like, so, you know, ran teams didn't run enormous teams or significant, but I think, you know, if, if there was ever anyone that I aspire to be like, I think it's that right. Like you, you know what I mean? Like I, I think 
I think people that work for me would say, you know, that I was a decent boss, but I guess I would have really wished that that's what they would have said. <laughs> yeah, that is, I, I get it. You know what I mean? Like, it's it. just, uh, he's inspiring. And then he is inspiring. I, I was blown away that I was really excited about finding out about the gelato and then realizing that the gelato might be the least most um, exciting thing about this well, I guy. I tried to bring it back to business because I'm thinking we better talk some about the gelato. I'm like, oh, fuck the gelato. Who cares? No, 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 no. But but I mean, I, I honestly, awesome. I really meant it, right? Like Kenny and I yeah. do, we work with founders all the time and culture is something that we talk about a lot and then we struggle with because – you, you know, putting, installing culture, you know, a couple of times we, we, we've installed culture only to have it undone on us because the leader has kind of come in and, 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 um, not noticed I've the culture that that's been places, installed, though, right? That and and that, that's, though. you know, yeah. And I've seen it in places like where friends <clears> have worked at and it didn't yep. have to be like, we were, I was, we had, we we're done at dinner last week with, um, like a lot of my friends are school teachers. But even in the schools that we were talking and it was, you know, how different the school, his schools become. Um, and a lot, it's a lot, a lot of it's strictly leadership where it's gotten so difficult to do things. The kids have taken over the school because there's just no leadership. There's no nothing on top right. where he said, you know, if it goes back 10 years, the person was phenomenal, more rules, but the kids didn't even mind it. Like it was, it was mm. just a, culturally it, this is hard, right? Culture can't, it doesn't start from the bottom up. It really doesn't. You know, it's been companies it, 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 or any organization, like you're going to follow, like the, the people follow the lead and the lead has to be the one that, that basically walks the walk, talks the talk and believes it. And if you're, because once you're with someone like that, it's hard not, I like, so how hard would it be to be nicer than we are if we work for someone like them? Like, you know what I mean? You would just do it because you kind but of it also, it. but it also makes you wonder, like, where in a CEO over in a CEO makeover or a CEO kind of redo on culture. Do you, do you know? It's kind of like well, what's the you know when you when you date when you, to, when, you right? when you go out with a nice person or you right. go out with a mean person is it possible to change your stripes? Like, is there, do you know what I mean? Like how, how, like when does a company look at a CEO and go, you don't have the right culture and you'll never have it. Do you know, like, can, know. You, can you redo culture? I don't know. I think, I think, yeah, I think ultimately you can. I mean, if you look at, like for example, he gave, if you look at Apple's a very different company under, under uh, Tim Cook than it was under Steve Jobs. Right, but right. I, I think what I'm asking is, so imagine if when Steve Jobs was first there and he didn't have good culture. Right. Right, and he, he just wasn't good at it and it was a, you know, kind of a gross place to work. Can you transform it from that to something amazing and still have Steve Jobs at the helm? Well, Do you know okay, what I mean? Like, my, okay, so you're yeah. asking that. No, I don't think you can. I don't, I think, I think if you, if you, okay, for the stuff you read, the stuff you hear, I mean, there's very, very few people would argue that Steve Jobs did not have an incredible ability to understand what technology could do for people and how people would love to see it, like massively intuitive. Like he got how that's, you know, it was the simplicity of how to use things. Yeah. But did Steve Jobs change? From the first time at Apple to the second, I don't remember anybody saying, you know, big hugs and kisses. I've read that anywhere. I've never really read that, you know, he wasn't the kindest person in the room. They never read that. Do you know what I mean? So if he, st if he was still here, it, it, nothing would change. It's yeah, got to so come, come from that. I mean, so a company can change, but I think it's really tough. The lepers don't change their spots. I don't want to make so, it so, so that's so black but, and white, but, but it's a, it's a weird it conundrum, right? Is because then founders that have bad culture, essentially, we're saying, listen, you got to move on from the company. Well, I to, think ultimately, if you're right? if you're a founder that actually gives a shit about what you've done, yeah, then ultimately you have to put, I, I, I guess, the company ahead of you. 
And at that point, it's probably best for the company if if you were not. Um, we, we, need probably, probably we, we need Angie Scott. We we need Angie or somebody. To them all because I think there's. Yeah. But, but again, I don't. I, I we need someone to but, wander in on this. But to do that, Phil, you have to be a different person too. Like you have to be a person who who says yep. who can see what your yep. what your faults are or shortcomings or whatever you want to call it. Because we're, we're going to do fast technology. thoughts on this with Angie. That's what I'm thinking. You know what? Let's do that because I yeah. like this topic. Because I'm I like I'm, it a lot. Because again, I, I seriously, if I was in my mid twenties, I'd go work for that guy in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Yeah. yeah. I'd even yeah, go in case, now. In case 56, you're wondering, I would do it. Yeah. In case you're wondering, like the fast thoughts is something Kenny and I have been doing on YouTube. Uh, we share it on LinkedIn. Uh, we do it on YouTube, and it's just us reacting to topics something that, cool or something that, that you know up. that we see that yeah. we we like, right? Um. Well, it's got to be you know, all we well, like. We, we have the mic. So, you know, what yeah. we like, we, we kind of react to or what we dislike. Um, yeah, yeah. So so I think we're going to do one on this. We're going to I'm going to grab. I talk to Ange tomorrow, so I'll talk to her. You know and what? Just, talk to her just see, what her see what she thinks. I mean, I'm I'm going to get 10 minutes on her sked next week and we'll riff about yeah, it. Yeah, uh, let's do it. Yeah, let's do yeah. it. Because I'd like to I love her take on it. Because yeah, yeah. You and yeah. I are going to get the. I think we'll get the idea right. We'll get the words wrong. And then it'll be, you know, like not today's yeah. words or something. Yeah. Might probably be more me doing that. But yeah, that's yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's all good. It's all good. Um, anyway, yeah. thank you for listening. Thank you for listening, everybody. That was a good show.